Greg Hale, and uh, today I am here to talk about Gabriel Rui Silva, that is a Portuguese uh, experimental poet. And the name of my uh, paper is Meaning in Flux, Romance and Remediation in Gabriel Rui Silva. So I will present my research uh, specifically uh, on this work of art with the name Romance. Uh, but before that, I would like to say a few words uh, about uh, Gabriel. And he's a poet, but he is also a performer who is part of this second generation of the Portuguese experimental poetry known as Poex. And we can frame this um, movement and I'm saying movement just to mention this group of artists, artists sharing the same approach on the study of language and literature and in arts in general. But they never recognize themselves as, as a group or as a movement. Anyway, we can mm, frame their artistic uh, action in the late 20th century. And we can also frame uh, their research within a poet practice and a model of living poetry whose archetypes of historical rupture with the Portuguese literary, literary system date back to modernism and futurism. Rui Silva's artistic and literary reflection lies at the intersection of a visual and experimental poetry trends with a lot of different artistic areas like performance, plastic arts, music, fluxus, installation, urban intervention and new technologies. And of course we can find the same dialogue between all of these disciplines, but um, the role uh, of Gabriel Rui Silva within this poetic avant-garde is a very singular one. And that's why I am here to talk about him and this a very um, special uh, work of art, Romance. And to show that, I would like to start uh, reading um, a small uh, part of this of this text. Um, in, in this presentation, I will um, I, I will divide um, I will divide it in two parts. So, in the first part, I will describe. Um, briefly uh, the plot of romance, the text, and then on the second part I will analyze in a much more detailed approach the the way uh, Silva's, um, this, uh, the way Silva um, uh, explores um, the point or the meaning of this uh, of this romance and so in this first part um, I would like to start reading uh, as I was saying before uh, a small uh, part of the text which goes like this and in the dark crystal clear images popped up images of blinding suns and big moons with dead silver waters which called me and shouted words or weird sounds in a raw and an intelligible language." End of quote. And I'm pointing to this uh, sentence because in this small um, group of uh, words we um, can mm, see uh, 
since the very first beginning that the artist is trying to find something, is trying to understand a kind of uh, completely different language made of crystal clear images, sun, blinding sun, big moons, dead silver waters. And um, so it's like as if he was trying to compound uh, a new way of communicate by discovering something. So, um, how is he doing this? So, to start, uh, I will explain that romance is a long exercise of radical experimentation between poetry, the text, romance, and the visual performances taking place throughout the decade of 1980. This intervention um, can be divided into seven parts, as many as the letters of each title, Romans, a number that should be, of course, read in its many symbolic uh, connotations. And for instance, to name but a few, the sum of the spiritual three and the material four is precisely seven, leading us to the very clear idea of a state or of a process of creation that is always unfinished. Just like the seventh and last mysterious part of this work that is yet to be concluded, that is not done yet, this last movement, and whose possible title, autobiography, as explained by uh, Gabriel, suggests a permanent movement, like, like life itself flowing until the very end, then of course turning back to its original chaos. And the name of this last part is uh, just a, 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 suggestion, a suggestion, of course, um, uh, but, uh, but with this information we can um, establish this, this relationship between um, our own story and uh, this movement, continuous movement. The starting point for this spiritual path is the text Instalação Romance, written in 1982 in Auxerre, uh, France, and published later in 1986 in Almada, Portugal. And this book opens with a highly revealing epigraph from William Blake. Dark is a way and light is a place. And in this uh, first exercise, so in this text, describing an intensified reality experience, so both fictional and mystical, disclosing uh, the sudden encounter with two big black and white birds through the clouds, both of them expressing a difficulty in singing. So it's as if they were there not to sing, but to deliver a message. And of course, I am uh, this is a, an interpretation of mine, um, that, but that's what I am doing here, of course, uh, all over the place. And this happens somewhere in a country made of crystal ruins, and I am using um, an expression uh, used by Silva in this book to, to express uh, this meeting in the center of the world, the world, sorry, uh, with a ground full of blood, the whole blood, as said by him. So, this silent meeting that between the, the protagonist, let us say, uh, and the birds will be happening from then on every Monday over two years. And this same moment is the point of departure for the following plot or 
we can also say pet throughout some of the following iconic and denotative places, uh, objects and events that I am going to describe now. And of course, I'm just summarizing it. So we have a seven kilometer road, which leads to a magnificent white and red house where the birds will always be expecting the eye. And here we can ask, who is this eye? The author, the character, the poet, the performer, both, all of us. In a second movement, the protagonist travels to a foreign country where he reaches another old meditative house, the building itself, inviting him to an inner experience of reflexive peace. But then, all of a sudden, birds come back in turmoil, very wisely demanding him to awaken. And in that uh, rainy and cold Monday morning, this I foresees a sharp sense of dissidence. This is a, a turning point on the narrative this sense of dissidence. And in this twilight stadium that follows, the subject experiences a suspended hollow darkness inside that sets a perceptive, perceptive movement around several insightful visions. But of course, this uh, movement being perceptive is towards the inner self of the author. So this is um, a movement mostly towards inside. After relating the South Pole to the snow uh, as lightful experiences, so he compares the South Pole to the snow and describes them as lightful, the poet remembers a past episode in a colorful motley and noisy fair where he ends up winning a man's head after participating in a long shooting gallery game. He describes the head with vivid eyes in extreme detail, deciding a few moments later to drown it in a lake. But then the head reemerges abruptly, full of roots and surrounded by a strong violet light. It is fair to say at this point of the analysis that one of the most powerful features of this work of art is Gabriel's grounding sensorial writing as we feel hit by its own lightness. Simone us to participate as well in these diaphanous rituals. So we are talking about um, description uh, but at the same time he is describing some kind of a ritual that he is experiencing inviting us to join him and we, and we feel this when we read the text after that he watches the birds closely so it's like as if he was studying these birds and its meanings using an optical prism and an old spyglass, deciding then to travel to the south, where he comes across another old house, an abandoned one, but now purely white. Inside, he enters a room and faces a blinding light, revealing at the same time an solid wreckage, so he is blind, but at the same time, he is seeing the past. Terrified, smashed by the horror of the truth, so in this moment he is facing the truth, no matter what this truth is. He runs away by train and meets the birds again at home. After watching them again through the optical prism, 
he suddenly notices a rainbow and feels a vast sense of quietness and peace right away. The birds then leave him a big black egg full of blood. Frightened, this embodied subject screams, so he's facing a huge revelation. And for a long period of time, he will be held captive compulsively in a psychiatric white hospital. And at this point, you can already, uh, we can already see that colors and this um, shifting, continuous shifting between uh, different um, stereotypes of um, of uh, light um, is quite strong uh, all over the text. And this primordial darkness precede the moment he finally looks at the moon and catches the final glimpse of the, the blackbird flying by. So this is the last time he sees the, the birds going, going away. And with the stars in his eyes, so he has stars inside his eyes, he digs into a puddle again until he finds a sparkling light revealing his hands and again the head, a satellite now turned into gold. And this moment of intense fulfillment and uh, accomplishment is accompanied by the sound of three quite important movements as well, of course made of sound. I mean, these sounds, they have uh, as well this, uh, this sense of movement, this sense of uh, flux that, that I will be uh, exploring um, in, the, in the second part. And so, um, what can we hear? We hear singing birds, a train at a railway station and a typewriter. And these three uh, sounds uh, will be the same sound on the six performances. Because each of them is pointing out to each part of the mystic archetype upon which Gabriel Ruiz Silva is expanding this romance. And so we can connect the singing birds with the heaven, we can connect the train and the station with the earth, and then we can connect the typewriter with logos. And here, when he is typing, he is crafting the meaning. Uh, so he is a human being crafting the meaning with stones, by stones, on stones. And so we can see this uh, as, as and I will explain this, uh, this part of the inscription where he writes uh, later. But for now, we can already see this movement as the production of knowledge, or at least um, the movement uh, trying to get the light, um, allowing it to come into existence. I'm moving now to the second part of my presentation and this second part has the title of meaning in flux because here I, I will try to analyze the meaning of this work of art as flux and 
how the the poet the the artist explores this same uh, meaning um, pursuing uh, a movement of, of flux it, it, I will explain uh, uh, now from now on so after this reflexive process Gabriel Ruiz Silva expands these principles uh, of this document of 1982 throughout six performance moments and we have a gap here between 1982 and 1986 uh, that is the day of the first performer and the method contains symmetrical rituals of destruction called an installation and here I'm, I'm, I'm using this expression trying to translate the, the concept in Portuguese a disinstallação that is a quite complex one in English an installation is I think it's a good one so and this method materializes the same dynamic of opposites that we have been seeing like night and day, noise and silence, light and dark, black and white, memory for forgetting among others, many others and we can say that this arrangement fulfills the ontological principle announced at the first moment or as put by himself and I quote between light and darkness the plot develops permanently and endlessly it is a romance unquote we are seeing here a performative concept of writing that is the, the mechanism which activates the intersemiotic research this plot this complex plot prompts out so being on a first level a written narrative procedure aimed at dealing with the chaos between light and dark romance is also a living drama so it is also um, a continuous performance that the author or the artist is living and which was meant to literally install the poet in his own flow again as explained by Silva and I quote the performance put me in a flow I live the romance the romance I live and in the original in Portuguese we have a performance instalado no fluxo vivo romance romance vivo and so this small expression romance vivo can be translated um, many different ways because we don't know if vivo here is the verb or if it is an adjective uh, alive um, <clears throat> so we have many possibilities uh, to read this, uh, this expression um, the romance I live or I, I or, or I romance live that's the question quite open and that will remain open until the very end and this flow can also be perceived as a wide-ranging method explored in order to address the intricate concept of romance presented and this is a radial process on two major levels so to say on a first level a blended mechanism which interrelates mediation temporal status spatial status and the plot and then on the second level we can see radial and a cyclical movement again that can also be identified in each of these structures and now I will explain how from my point of view of course well the plot revolves around a, an enlarging movement between light and dark as we as we have been seeing since the beginning flashes of life in death 
So the pathway itself is cyclical amid some early recurring objects in places like the road, the house, the head, the moon, among others. Then concerning the temporal axis, a chronological order, or should we say disorder, is established by the installation and installation dynamic presented as a cyclical temporal continuum, namely in the six performance moments. But there's a small difference between, um, let us say, a first part of the performances and then a second part. I will explain now um, what am I talking about. So, in the first two, in 1986 and in 1987, the installation was destroyed only, but exactly, seven days later by the performer himself. So, I'm talking about the first one in 1986 with the Portuguese name Instalação Romance, in English Installation Romance. And then seven days later, the author, with the help of some of the uh, guests that were invited to destroy it as well, the installation. Then, in 1987, the intervention entitled The 24 Stones, as 24 Pedras in Portuguese, so in this one we will find the same ritual of destruction seven days later. But I would like to, to say a few words about this uh, 24 stones because um, this is a central uh, performance in, in, in Romans. In this one, the poet will be performing a kind of um, white mag magic r ritual using 24 letters with 24 stones spread on the white floor, which are neatly organized in golden rods to form the word Romans, as you can see now in the end. So, the, the stones are in number of 24 and we can see in this 2 and 4 the symbol of duality for 2 and inner wisdom for 4 among many other meanings for each of these numbers. The stones are the magical tool opening up the field to the mise-en-scene of the world displaying the meaning of romance that at the same time Gabriel is uh, displaying, showing as creation. Then seven days later we will have the performance with the title Conversation between Gothenburg and Marconi at a railroad station. Uh, this title, of course, is uh, a very important one as well because uh, Gabriel here is mentioning uh, Gothenburg and Marconi pointing out to the media specificity of communication. But at the same time, he's destroying it. And I will like this part open because that's something that requires a much more deep uh, analysis. Well, in these four performances we can see a mise-en-scene thing that seems to, to match the purpose of emphasizing the material that seven days later he will be destroying by means of stage, and here I'm using the notion of Patrice Pavis, material by means of stage, because is when he is when he displays the meaning um, through this uh, material disposition, and then its destruction that he is pointing out to the reflexive 
uh, implications, the actions. In the second moment, in 1988, there were two performances, both containing their own moments of distraction. So the performer performs the distraction at the same time. And I would like to start with the intervention. I perfectly remember how it all started, where he performs the, the the same distraction as a constitutive part of the construction and how and I will just briefly uh, mention this moment so amid the electronic wires maybe we can connect this with some kind of electronic type of communication connection wires connection and so he presents himself all dressed in white and suddenly he, he glimpses the word memory in blue and again we have here the colors and this blue dialoguing with the gold and with the red demands this reading of God, the God, the Spirit, and the Sun. So, can you say that this blue uh, is symbolizing God? Maybe. And he's burning each of the hanging letters will be the golden flame. And here we have to presenting the Holy Spirit. That's the question. And then the letters start melting down onto the floor, mixing themselves up with another word, the word real, this one in red, a possible symbol of the sun. On the same floor of blue, red and yellow, now as one, and so mostly red now, he keeps trying to write the sentence, I perfectly remember how it all started. But as he starts writing the same sentence, it disappears at the very same time. And I ask you to pay attention to the sentence. I perfectly remember how it all started. So you write that and it disappears at the very same time. From the electronic choir, seven, gold, seven golden letters forming the word Romans keep falling down. And the performance ends when the performer finishes writing the word Romans, adding the final E, thus entering and at the same time offering the clue for the eternal, the living drama, the Romans, for each of us. In the way I, I am say, uh, reading this work of art, of course. Then we can see more or less the same in a defense world, world of writing. In, in this is the translation for the the Latin uh, expression orbis orbis uh, sensualium scripturae. Mm, and this one, this is the original title of this performance. And in this one, the destruction, according to Gabriel, was left to fate, the very unknown. Explaining himself, explaining, and I quote, I left the creation in the hands of the divine providence. It came to light and returned into the night. Unquote. In Portuguese, entreguei o criado nas mãos da divina providência, veio à luz e regressou à noite. Fim de citação. Then, talking about the spatial structure, we can also see that it is also presented as fluid. And in this sketch that you are now seeing, included in the memorabilia of Installation Romance, Installation Romance in 1986, 
the performer displays an inverted but rotational and changeable correlation between earth and heaven, which are here presented as surface and depth, respectively. Griel Silva himself points out to the Mithia Eliot theory on stones as magical material, so he talks uh, about this uh, philosopher um, saying that um, it will help uh, to understand the meaning of this work of art. And so this theory on stones is presented as magical material epitomizing the same fluid crossroad between heaven and earth that we have been seeing. The philosopher also associates the sacred stones with the divine presence, highlighting their connotation as a tool, so as something that we use to attain the divine presence, let us say, or a tool for writing, let us add with the magical function that as we have been seeing here in Gabriel. Pierre Lévy reminds us regarding this point how the same stone was the very first material for both writing and inscription. The material where the signs were literally carved, underlining the interconnectedness between language and techne or episteme in the sense of Martin Heidegger and Plato, so as knowledge paid for. Therefore, it is worth remembering that if the, quote, human world is technological to its core, then it is impossible to separate the human from its material environment or from the signs and images to which humanity gives meaning to life and the world, unquote. Consequently, writing with the whole body as an intersensorial material to an intermediate poiesis, and here I'm mention, mentioning poiesis as a kind of doingness um, to this whole body that can be connected to several mediums. And this is a Gabriel Rui Silva innermost uh, I stay strategy in order to fulfill enlightenment as presented in this work of art, uh, Romans. And this approach is thus based on a permanent movement from the surface that we can connect to the idea of earth into the depth that we connect to heaven. But also the other way around from heaven to earth that's why I'm mentioning is in terms of a rotational movement, the flux. At, th at this point, uh, and now I will particularly uh, relate all of these analyses with the concept of remediation that is in the title of the presentation. At this point, correlation between the concept of remediation as proposed by Bolter and Grusin, I'm using this one, and the notion of stone as presented by Silva can be established, as the stone is the medium, the magical tool used to turn dark into light. But for this, this stone must be activated within a performative orientation, to use the terms of to Kattenbelt, the performative orientation. And Kattenbelt, to tackle this concept, quotes uh, Umberto Eco, the realizing theory on the, quote, performed objects, bodies, and actions and events as disposed of their contingency, that operating as intention, intentional, sorry, intentional signs in the perspective of possible world or situations, unquote. So, 
if we dispose that contingency, they open to many different possible um, interpretations or creations. This approach very much echoes the remediated nature of the media mentioned above, but with the difference that this unloading from reality must be perceived as a mode of bringing into existence the reflexive and expressive potential of the same object or event, here always presented, uh, always presented as connected. At the outset of romance is an immaterial displacement epistemology uh, how I have been trying to sketch based on the very assumption of romance as a transient meaning in flux. The procedure of depicting this drama is at the same time a process of carving its meanings within a media constellation between text, performance, video, music, sound, plastic art, photography, among others. So there's a radial one, again, aiming to explore the generative potential of meaning. So the point of departure, of departure is text moving toward the performance, but then in this same performance uh, Silva will be exploring the interconnectedness of the text with several different mediums like video, music and sound, plastic art, photography and so on. So the core here is the meaning. Intermediality should thus be understood in this sense as, and I quote, playful staging of signs and media, unquote, and I'm here, again, using cut and belt uh, uh, concept, uh, theory. So, also with reflexive purposes, namely, in the particular case of Romans, as a transmedial methodology complying with the investigation of the performative instanti instantiation of the texts in its intermedial structural relations. And so this means that the text here is presented as intermedial in terms of the meaning, in terms of the creation uh, it is uh, trying to carve. So no matter the medium we are using, the most important here is the movement, both from the body and uh, this medium and space and time. But if we take the recent media theory into consideration, based on a far more radical approach, one should assert that we can no longer talk about media. And this is sustaining what, I, what I've been saying, of course. And Lev Manovich notes how old concepts of medium no longer describe our post-digital and post-net culture, suggesting the notion of post-media aesthetics instead. This model allows us to think of this culture as software, the shifting our focus from authorship and representational issues to the operations available to the user or reader. In dealing with this idea, Sarah Bay Chang proposed the concept of post-media performance. And uh, this and this term and this concept um, is a kind of uh, connected with this um, post-media aesthetics advocates a kind of analysis that, and I quote, does not make great effort to distinguish, document and describe cultural objects in light of media specificity, but that instead assumes all media are always already activated in every cultural object, end of quote. 
So the most important thing here is the meaning and the way we try to carve this meaning. And so may we does add that all media are a matter of displaying the immaterial flowing and displacement of meaning? It's a question. Because this is very much the proposition of Gabriel Rui Silva, as I try to outline. And that I will um, summarize here in the following diagrams. So the plot of Romans is presented as a pathway to heaven, the death where the light is. But that is the way, and in order to light up that same light, one must carve one's own story, one's own Romans, writing it down with the whole body. So here's Gabriel is inviting us to write us write our own romance, romance, our to live our own own living drama. And the stone here is the symbol of an intermediate poiesis conceived and put on stage. So life itself is the, the stage. The mise en scène rituals uh, in this uh, work of art, Romans, the six performances missing. And of course, there is one missing. I have to remind you of that. So all of this with the purpose of triggering the generative potential of meaning. There is always in a potential that is never closed. It's always something in potential, always being activated within the real life, the real condition, the real medium. And in this sense, semiotic, it has the processing of meaning must be seen as a process that is both material, but is also immaterial because it flows regardless of its material composition and manifestation, manifestation. But it is precisely this process of giving shape that is our purpose in life, to write ourselves our own romance by crafting its meaning endlessly. And I conclude with this question. Could this be the explanation for the forever unfinished condition of this work of art. Thank you very much. <laughs>